doing a notification. There we go. Okay, boom. And we are live. I want to thank everyone for tuning in to a very special edition of Off the Record on the People's Podcast this evening. We have an incredible guest with us to, uh, tonight, one who's going to give us some amazing information as well as inspiration, um, a creative uh, genius. Uh, that's right, I said a creative genius, none other than Brother Nkenji. Uh, first of all, assalamu alaikum, sir. Wa alaikum salam, brother. Thank you very much for taking time out of your busy schedule to come on the People's Podcast. Um, all right, the first question that we want to get into, sir, is um, we know we, we don't know yet, but you want to inform us about your composing, your arranging, and your producing, your all of the creative stuff. But when did you first hear the teachings of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad? Man, first of all, thank you, brother. In the name of Allah, the most beneficent, the most merciful, I just got to latest groundwork first by saying we've been trying to have this <laughs> interview for many many a time and i sincerely appreciate you bearing with me and my schedule and trying yes, to make sir. things happen as i'm growing but the first place that i heard the teachings of the honorable elijah muhammad were uh was was in the womb honestly i don't know i was created with that germinating my seed so uh from what I understand, my father found the teachings, I want to say in 1988 or 89. Mm -hmm. And then I was born in 93. So there was a minute of that thing cooking in the pressure cooker yes, before sir. I popped out. Um, and so by that time, my mom and my father and my sister, I have a sister who's a year older than me, were already on the scene and, you know, listening to Minister Farrakhan lectures you know, on, on cassette tapes and, and VHSs. And um, so the Honorable Elijah Muhammad was already in the house. It wasn't a, a, a new introduction for me, but we weren't members of the Nation of Islam registered, but yes, sir. Okay, great. All praise to uh, Yes, sir. Um, both of my sisters, Naima and Mimi say peace. Um, and thank yes. everybody who's watching all across the country. Uh, we can't wait to put this on YouTube. So let us know what city y'all watching and showing love to our brother, brother and Kenji. All right, so you 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 around the teachings. Um, what was it that made you say I want to get registered? Well, I got married, brother, and before I got married, I realized I didn't know anything, and it's a, a, a interesting position to be in mm -hmm. when my wife, her dad, is a pastor, very important man in the city of Washington or the state of uh, Maryland and in Washington D.C. Um, and I'm sitting here talking about Farrakhan stuff and bean pies and assalamu alaikum and how to eat to live. And I have holes in my understanding of what the foundational principles of all of those things are. Mm. It ain't going to work. My wife knows too much about Jesus for me to be trying to lead you spiritually and not know too much about Jesus. Like, it, it's just, it don't make no sense. So I, I realized I wasn't equipped to stand up on what I believe in. So I needed to register. I needed to get other brothers and sisters around me so I could ask questions. And if if, if need be, uh, figure out where the Nation of Islam is totally incorrect and throw the whole theology in the trash can. Mm -hmm. but what happened was the more I studied, the more you realize, well, that's absolutely impossible. And every single point that my, my wife was bringing to me, at, at that time, you know, we were engaged. So we're working through that process of courtship, but every single question that was uh, raised, I was able to find the answer through the process of, you know, being around the teachings and registration and asking my direct upline and having more of a um, being plugged in all the way. So I really was able to get all the answers versus just, um, you know, uh, uh, receive them through osmosis of, oh, you know, I listen to the minister every day, you know what I'm saying? It's a different thing. So that, that's, yeah, what, yeah. that's what pushed me, uh, wanting to be married and wanting not to be second fiddle to God in my household, you know, second fiddle to my wife under the leadership of God, rather. That's deep. Okay, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Praise be to Allah. All right. Wonderful. All right. So now let's get into how we um, connected 
uh, through through the art and through uh, on the creative side. Let's let's talk about your um, this proud family and how long we've been you know waiting you know to man how how did that come about? You arranging the proud family uh, song? Man, it really don't make no sense. First of all, except for Allah who came in the person of Master Fard Muhammad, which and to any of my family out there who has no idea what that means, it isn't weird. It's just God is in every single one of us. But there's a person that came and showed us an example of that happening at the highest level. And that's real. I mean, Jesus explained that that's what we should be doing. It's literally our job is to become God. But somebody showed up, gave us these teachings, and that man was Master Fard Muhammad. And then you get the Muhammad Ali's and the Malcolm X's and the I'm black and I'm proud and everybody talking about Black Lives Matter now that wouldn't be happening if it wasn't for this man so that's why I put that out there but the way that Proud Family Escapade started was a long play it was a really long play I have to thank this man Kurt Farquhar because musically the Proud Family is his baby musically his older brother Ralph Farquhar created the Proud Family with Bruce Smith. They're two animators, amazing animators that worked for Disney for a long time. And they made the original show. I grew up with the original show, as a lot of us did. If you was, you know, if you was young-ish around 2000, 2001, you remember the show. Like, if you know who Beyonce is, you probably remember the show. Like, you know about Solange, you know about her from the show. Um, So I, originally had met Kurt in the capacity far removed from the Proud Family theme song. Um, It was a show called The Quad um, that he did on BET. He was the composer for that show. Mm. I have a friend named Peyton. He was one of the lead actors on the show. And we go way back. So we went to FAMU together, Florida and you already know what it is, Rattler, Strike and all that stuff. uh, highest of seven hills, whatever. Uh, we we were in the same social circle because as an RA, I had certain responsibilities to create events. This is a very long story. And one of the events I did, one of the events I did weekly so I could check off my box for being an RA was um, uh, uh, bars. It was this event every Monday night called bars. We go to the quad, which was like the hangout area. We went to the hangout area of FAMU's campus and um, we would just rap. And it would be in different locations on campus, but eventually the event got so popular that everybody that could rap on campus would come and we would just rap for sometimes a few hours. Um, Through that, there was a group of young brothers that came together called Cap Six. And it was six individuals that all have bars for days. And I was kind of just, you know, the MC leading the, uh, uh, proctoring the event. Um, but I would jump in every now and then and show people that I'm not weak. Um, <laughs> but Peyton was one of those six brothers. And as a, a, a resident assistant, I guess that's the name of RA, um, I was responsible for a hall. And if I'm not mistaken, at one point he lived on my hall and I was known for being kind of that, that RA that, Look, man, if you ain't killing nobody, I'm not going to snitch. <laughs> like, if you, like, live your life, I'm going to handle my business. You handle your business. Uh, if you need anything, I got you. But I'm not going to press you out about not making your bed. Like, I'm not going to, you know, all those little things that RAs would do that would get them a bad name on campus. I wasn't one of those people. So mm-hmm. Peyton and I got even closer from the music um, to, you know, just being homies. And along with the rest of the brothers in Cap 6. Fast forward two years into my FAMU experience, I get a call from Good Music, this Kanye West team. They want me to fly out to LA and do this whole thing. Mm. And I was like, bet, I'm out. So I leave. And then uh, I get there and I've been, I've been, now we're talking 2013, 2014. Um, and and uh, it's been about a couple of years that I'm working and, and things are going well with Good Music. And it gets kind of stable. And then Peyton hits me up and is like, yo, I'm trying to come out to LA and rekindle my acting career. I didn't realize this man was a child actor. He had done a whole bunch of movies that everybody would know. If you look him up on IMDb, you'll see what I'm talking about. But I didn't know. 
So I was like, bro, of course, you know what it is. My house is your house. So, you know, he would come over, you know, crash, you know, we'd whip around to his different auditions. I let him borrow the car, do what he needed to do. And he remembered that when he scored the lead role on the quad, he remembered it. He remembered mm-hmm. that, you know, the brotherhood. And I always think a lot for him and I'll, he'll always be my brother for showing me an example of brotherhood before I joined the brotherhood um, of the FOI. You know, that was FOI mentality. Like, I'm gonna hold it down for you. And it ain't no written, you know, procedures. It isn't no contract, nothing. I'm gonna do what I can. Everything I have is yours. He got the gig at the quad as one of the lead actors. It just so happened that his acting role was a um, like a jock slash rapper. So like on campus in the show on campus, he was a rapper slash sports person, mm. which was kind of his real life. And so he got to a point where one day he was like, bro, Kenji, can you please come to Hollywood? And I was like, no, I'm tired because I had just been out all, all day in L.A. that night. And he was like, bro, I, I need your help writing this song or whatever. The music is whack. And I was like, absolutely. So I pulled up <laughs> and he had already seeded the whole, I didn't really know this, but this is brotherhood, right? He had already seeded the whole organization of the TV show to know about this young dude named Nkenji, who's this amazing composer, writer, rapper. And he's he's so cold. Oh my goodness, y'all just gotta meet him. He's a genius, da 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 I didn't know none of this, right? But he had played me up so big. And then he had told these people to their face that the lyrics they were giving his character were garbage. And he was like, yo, just let my boy come in. He could fix all of this. <laughs> like, he all, just, just let him come in for one day. So I pulled up not realizing that like all eyes were on me and I'm I'm thankful that he didn't say it like that because I was able to just do my thing two hours later two songs were finished and hop in the booth you know Peyton knocks it out and then when I'm about to leave Kurt Farquhar was there who was overseeing all the music as the composer and he was like hey man uh I don't know where you come from but you should work with me in my music library Mm, mm. He has a music library called True Music. Concept of a music library is a whole bunch of songs that all have their paperwork in order already. So if you're a TV show, you can one-stop shop, hit up the music library. <clears throat> you don't have to chase nobody around for clearances and contracts. It's all done. He owns the biggest Black-owned music library that I know of. And he asked me to be a part of it that night. And I said, yes, sir. Three years later, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I see a little, uh, we, we've been working. I, I've given them, you know, a few dozen songs in the music library at that point. I've gotten my friends from FanView placements on the music library at that point on different TV shows. Mm. And uh, we have a good relationship. He sends me something. I'll send it back as soon as I can. It's a reliable situation. But, you know, a few years later, I see a, a headline pop up just through the grapevine that the Powell family is getting renewed. And so I text this man, at this point I have his personal number. I text this man directly. I'm like, sir, if this is happening, a screenshot and all that, like if this, you know, is happening, please, I would love to be a part of it in any way, shape or form. And he texts me back like, for sure. Like, we'll see what happens. And that I left it alone. Several months later, you know, he hits me back and he's like, hey, man, are you down to submit some options for the Proud Family theme song? And I'm like, bro, you can't be serious. <laughs> like, that, 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 what are you, are you, you don't understand what you're asking me right now. And I said, absolutely. And I just got on it. So it was three or four days of just in the grind, creating different sketches of what the song could be if it was revamped, revitalized, brought into 2022 with these new babies who do not care about whatever you listen to in the 90s at all. They are on TikTok. They're listening to 30 second snippets of snippets. They don't want to know about your uh, your your creative progression through chords and how many verses do you have? And uh, is there a bridge? They don't care about that. So it was tough for me. But uh, yeah, that answers your question of how I got to that point. And I'm just going to finish like how the song went. <laughs> so okay. Okay. I, I submitted like four different options of the arrangement that, I, you know, I'm sitting in a studio, I'm playing out all this stuff. 
and then I'm singing the options uh, for Beyonce. Like in my mind, I'm thinking this is gonna be Destiny's Child because that was the logical thing. Destiny's Child sung the original Proud Family song. So I'm sitting here manipulating my vocal cords to do something that I think Beyonce would do. Mm-hmm. Solange and Kelly Rowland and all these people. And then the first three, the first two things I turned in, Kurt was just like, absolutely not. He had to call me, he cursed me out. And look, you could ask my wife because she was on the receiving end of this. Because I got it and I had to pass it on. But he, this man cursed me out and was like, bro, I didn't call you to do exactly what I did 20 years ago. This, mm-hmm. saw, this, this sounds the same. And I didn't realize, <clears throat> I mean, I, I think um, I thought I was playing, paying homage homage, whatever that word is, yeah. to the yeah, to the original song. But he's like, in Kenji, the song is as old as you. Ain't nobody trying to hear that. Don't just do the same thing, but swap out an 808. Like you gotta do something new and unique. And okay. it was hard, it was hard for me, right? Cause I thought it was banging, but I thought it was banging cause I'm already used to the theme song that it was. So I had to get newer, had to get fresher. So then the third one I sent in, he was like, that's all right. Let's see, let's see if you can do one more. <clears throat> Remember this. He said, that's all right, let's see if you can do more. So then I, I say, at this point I haven't slept for like two and a half days. And then I do a fourth, I squeeze one out. I got all types of stuff going on. I'm clearing my schedule. I squeeze another, a fourth version out and I, and I send it in. And this is past the deadline by like 24 hours. I'm like, why would he ask me this? I send it in and I knew it was trash. <laughs> I was like, this is not it. And then he was like, yeah, man, this isn't it. But, you know, it's all good because I just want to get one more out of you. The third one was the one. And I was like, what, bro? Like, this is what type of method? He, he at that point, when he, when he got the third one, it took him less than 10 minutes. This man had already sent it to the executive producers, the whole team, already started getting it signed off on Disney side, started hyping it up while he's telling me to my face, that's all right, try one more because he wanted to see if I had any more creative juices where I could maybe one up it, but it was already a done deal. So that is the whole story of how my arrangement made it to the placement. So all praise due to a lot. <laughs> praise due to a lot, that's amazing, man. And people showing you love all over the country. My name, my sister Naima says uh, the brotherhood. All right, wonderful. So now can you please explain in layman's terms, what is a rain, what, how does arranging a, a score or a theme song, how, how, does that, how does that take place? Okay, this is the keep it real section, right? Cause I don't got no time. Now check this, a lot of people are going to describe the process in the terms of the industry. I'm gonna describe this process in layman's terms cause you asked me that and I'm going to obey, I'm going to obey the orders. <laughs> Of, of the commanding officer you understand yes, like, you, you went charge so i'm not gonna dance around and this is the reality is um our beautiful um lighter skinned brethren brethren which we refer to as white people have created an industry <laughs> in which they just made a whole bunch of stuff up one of those things was the term arranger mm. another one of those things is the term producer uh, mm. The term composer, the term writer, these things don't, they don't mean nothing but people that create intellectual property. And mm. at the core of it, anybody that's involved in the creation of intellectual property is a creator of the intellectual property, but they made different stratifications of um, involvement so that it could be a money play. Because historically, this all was built on racism, right? Black people made all types of songs, but you niggas, so you can't make no money off of those songs. Mm. So when a white person records that song during the Jim Crow era and before, it gets to be published on their segregated publishing options and you get to become a radio hit and you get to become the king of this and the king of that when you really stole it from sitting around listening to slave origin music. Right. So what happened was you'll get records that are, quote unquote, produced by some white man, 
sung and performed by a bunch of black people. Whereas did that white man teach this black people how to sing soulful and do that note and bend it and make it sound cool? And no, they created all of that on their lonesome. Mm-hmm. And the white man showed up and helped to organize, arrange, compose, mm-hmm. produce. You see what I'm saying here? Mm-hmm. All right, so it's a game that we're playing and it's an antiquated game. And it really needs to be thrown in the doggone trash can, which mm-hmm. is what I'm here to talk about. So <clears throat> what it means is according to um, the music law dictionary <laughs> to arrange is somebody that has rejiggered, reconstructed, rearranged, if you will. I hate to use a word, the definition of a word, Um, but somebody that has taken pieces that already exist for a song and moved them around, made them a little bit better, but you haven't actually changed the song itself. The lyrics are the same. The chord progression is the same. The main melodies are pretty much the same. It, it is the song, but you have made a different vibe with the song. That's what an arranger would be considered. So the reason why that matters, because that just sounds like a whole bunch of mealy mouth nothing, right? Mm-hmm. The reason why that matters <clears throat> isn't because of your participation creatively, it's because of the money. Mm. Because if you have an arranger do something on something, you don't have to pay the arranger a percentage of publishing. Mm. You only have to pay the arranger a fee for arranging. Mm. Now this is, this is just industry law standard, whatever you wanna call it, but there is no such thing as industry law. And there is no real thing as industry standard because it changes day to day, situation to situation. But in my situation, a ranger means there's something that existed and I don't participate in any ownership of it because all I did was just finesse it again, right? The reality of that is different. I know you didn't exactly ask, but I'm gonna answer. The reality of what happens is, and Kenji sits on Kenji's laptop and for days at a time, hours in a row, creates something with nobody's input and then turns it in. And then the person that originally made that, which would be Kurt Farquhar in this case, says, hmm, I don't like that. I don't like that. I like this. I like this. Gives you some verbal notes. And then Kenji goes back into the studio by himself with his laptop and his keyboard and his microphone and does recording and arranging and composing and producing of an original piece that is based off of the original piece. Mm -hmm. And then I turn that in. And then if the person that originally made the piece has ownership of the piece, then they can make changes to say, okay, well, this version of it, I'll give you a percentage of ownership. The trick is most of us are not in that position. Most of us are not in that position. And Disney likes to own stuff. So if Disney owns it, and you're talking about, oh, I want to give this person a percentage of ownership, they might look at you like you got 25 heads. Mm -hmm. So this was a barrier to entry, but I chose to enter right versus play that game of fighting oh i want to be a this i want to be a that by title because these titles don't mean nothing man we know what we do as a people and nobody can take that away from you as a title just keep creating and next time get a little bit more ownership and then a little bit more and to the point where you could just walk away from stuff and be like nah i'm not gonna do that because i'm doing my own thing so i hope that was a cohesive answer to your question of what what does range the theme song mean? Absolutely, I think you broke it down. You explained it absolutely. Yes, sir. Our president to a lot people showing you love all across the country. My sister Miriam says congratulations. That's major. Um, Honest Drippin says I some like them. Uh, Chris Taylor says in explaining arranging etc. Sounds like the terms used to describe patenting music. Okay, I see what you. I see. I see what he's explaining. All right. Yes, sir. Now. Once, once me and you were, uh, I was explaining to you the project that I was working on and how we, me and you got, got to collaborate. So I said, who is in Kenji? So I hit my sister like, hey, I'm out. I was like, yo, he's saying he about to pop, boom, boom. Google you, see all this work that you've done. Can you explain to us some of the work uh, that you've already done, man? I mean, you've done some major stuff. Man, praise be to a lot. Thank you, sir. Well, to start, let's just start with the Proud family and move back. 
So with the Proud family, you know, I chose to enter that game of I'm going to do this. I'm going to say yes to this theme song. But because I said yes, and you ask Kurt, I'll tell you the same thing. It's a value to being humble that is intangible. It's bigger than any amount of money. <laughs> if somebody's humble, and, and a phrase that Kurt would use is, you know, easy to work with, then you can get stuff done. Because he told me everything I told you, he told me all down the front end. Again, this is brotherhood. This is FOI code, fruit of Islam. This is how men are supposed to treat men. Yo, this is about to be a little bit of a sticky situation. Might feel a little unfair, but let me tell you how it's going to play out. And let me tell you why you should go with this. And I'm going to tell you how it's going to be better for you on the other end. Kurt walked, through me, walked me through all of that step by step and told me how he went through what he went through back in the day. Man, this man is quote unquote arranged plenty of songs back in the day. He's, I think he's in his 60s now. Back in the day before there was any type of, uh, you know, a racial bias being explored by the industry and Black mm -hmm. Lives Matter and all that stuff. Man, he was getting screwed back then mm -hmm. on stuff that was huge and y'all would never know. And he didn't even have his name on. So they didn't even give him the decency of having an arranger credit on stuff back in the day. That is huge. And y'all wouldn't even know unless he told you, which he might not because of humility. So my point is because I had the spirit and all praise is due to Allah for that spirit and the example of Minister Farrakhan for that spirit. But because I had the, the, the wind beneath my wings of the teachings to rise above emotion into the thinking of God, I was able to push out that theme song. And that resulted, if you go to Target and get the Proud Family vinyl, I got six songs on that joint, bro. And my wife has one. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like it, the theme song was just the entry, the, but then the other joints, no, I got my writing credit and my producer credit and yeah, my, yeah. Mix, my mixing credit. I got all types of performer credit. Okay, they even yeah, put yeah. my demo that I produced before we did the final theme song as the last track. Whereas yeah. in Kenji one time as the artist before yeah. we replaced it with my sister, Joyce Rice, who's an amazing singer and an amazing talent. And Deanna Stewart, who's an amazing singer and an amazing talent. So they didn't have to look out for me like that. But I think they only looked out for me like that because I looked out for them. So starting with the Proud family, I got a whole bunch of joints on that show and on season two, which has been announced. Um, but then there was the show called... Um, and shout out to my man, Henry Van Roden. He was uh, at that time, just an assistant music supervisor. And anybody that does music and wants to make money from it, remember music supervisors are key and they don't necessarily look like the flashy people. <clears throat> They're the people that wear Vans and like old jeans and like a t-shirt. And they might wear the same t-shirt like three days of the week. But these people are some of the most genuine and some of the most important um, game changers in the music industry. Know your music supervisors because they're the ones that deal with the contracts for every song on TV and film. And that's where you're gonna get your real money. <clears throat> so I say that to say Henry Van Roden is one of these people. And at that time he was an assistant music supervisor. Now he's full blown, he's big time and he's my homie still. But um, he had gotten me a placement on TNT which had really opened my eyes in 2018 to the fact that I can, I can really do this. Like people aren't just talking stuff. I mean, I've been with good music at that point for a few years and Kanye's team saying that your stuff is cold. That's, that's, that's good enough. You say, but, you say. but me on my own in my own relationship with this guy got me that placement on TNT. And then I got a placement on Blackish through that dude as well. Hmm. I was on the season finale of one of the seasons with one of my songs called Waymint. And so mm -hmm. when that happened, I realized I need to spend a little bit more time exploring this idea of being independent. So um, I decided to, after I finished the project that I had to do for good music, I went on and became independent and started to meet more people. And through that, I was able to get other TV shows. Um, there was some random movie that Trey Songs did <laughs> called like, I think it's called like Brothers or I think it's called something, something brothers. I don't know, but I got a song on there. Yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. <laughs> so I was like, oh, I want 
got my first feature film. And then I kept going um, and I've done some songs with my wife that were then placed in um, like the Hallmark channel, bro. I mean, as a Muslim, I probably got the most money from Christmas songs, bro. I'm telling you, there's this show called Merry Little Christmas. Uh, it's a movie that was on, was it Hallmark? I think it's Hallmark um, called Merry Little Christmas Wedding. And then Merry Little Christmas Baby, I think. I should know, but my point is we got songs placed on those movies as well that my mm. wife and I did um, independently. And we're just building from strength to strength because as we get more exposure in TV and film, we're trying to bring in more of our friends. So yo, hit me up if you're talented. We're trying to bring in more people because now if it's my song, I'm putting other people on there as producer, you know, I'm not gonna play that little arranger game, but producer. <laughs> writer creator ownership giving you yes, a sir. percentage of the publishing that can live forever and i'm trying to do that with all the people that we have in our network so it's us every time we get something on major film and tv and in a second i don't want to do that no more i want us to make our own major film and tv we got enough black people that are great actors and writers with enough money that we can have a few different tyler perry studio situations i'm tired of making these shows for these white folks not that race matters, but they make it matter. So why don't we get some on the other side? You know what I'm saying? Why are all the major black shows at ABC, white people, CBS, white people? Not to mention they all pretty much Viacom, which is white people. It's just questions, just questions, simple questions. Mm -hmm. My point is, these are the things that I've done. My legacy so far is really minimal because at the end of the day, most of it has been building somebody else's nation. And so I don't really stand too much and stand too proud in front of it because it ain't really nothing compared to what we should have. Mm. What we should have is our own Star Wars level film depicting the teachings of Master Far Muhammad. Why is that not happening yet, bro? It's 2022. In eight years, it'll be a hundred years since we've had this idea. It's like these like the best ideas of film and TV that have ever existed came out of the Nation of Islam and they're not movies yet. We got Malcolm X, the movie. That was trash. <laughs> it, it, it was trash. It was trash. And it still was a huge cultural impact. So what are we doing? Until I get some of them credits, I don't want to talk to you about my credits, bro. I don't care. They, they, they're, they're worthless. They're beautiful, but it's just a start. So we really got to do our thing and not just do their thing for a check, which is what I'm doing, honestly. So yeah, that's... Hey, I need to calm down. I'm sorry, brother. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum salam, brother. All praises to Allah. My sister Naima says facts. Dr. Henry, Mimi, Mimi's laughing. Dr. Henry M. Carter says she loves it. Uh, Mariah Mache says lifetime. Mimi says she loves Merry Little Christmas with Kelly Rowland. Uh, apparently, me, uh, my sister Miriam is trying to uh, sing, but you know, you know, hey, we're singing them Christmas songs, you know. Hang and that, on the mistletoe. Yes. You know what I'm <laughs> And shout out Mariah Misha. That's my wife right there. Shout out oh, to your wife. Okay, yes, yes, sir. Okay, great. All right, listen. Um, I also want to um, do a quick 60 second commercial break for all of the sponsors of the People's Podcast this month. I want to thank everyone who continues to uh, like, share, subscribe, donate. I can't wait to put this on YouTube. Um, our family is growing on all social media platforms. If you'd like to be a sponsor and or donor, please cash out the People's Podcast. My brother Rashad, Street Premier Media Production. He has a 4K camera and a drone. He does television and film editing. My sister Miriam, aka Mimi, ABC I Love Me, children's book, coloring book, and now Spanish book, all three available on Amazon. My sister Naima, Stay On Point Dance Academy, LLC. She teaches ballet virtually to young girls all across the country and right here in the studio in Atlanta, Georgia. We love our tiny dancers. Rock Communications, if you're working on a book and you need copy editing, project management, content development, or media um, consulting, please reach out to Rock Communications. Fashion Guys, Urban Streetwear, 314-329-6009. He'll keep you dressed in the best of fashion. Um, Student Minister Robert L. Muhammad, Conflict Mediation, Squashing the Beef Throughout the Southwest Region. He does a phenomenal job. His wife is the foodie of Muhammad. Children of the Most High, giving birth to a God in the science of child rearing. Brother Kenneth, Bowtie Make Extraordinaire. His ship Bowtie see you anywhere across the nation. Dr. Henry M. Carter, King Henry's Turkey Legs right here in Atlanta, Georgia. Brother Rashad Muhammad, COVID-19 Disinfecting Cleaning Services. My father's book, The Soldier Movement of Christ, abdushrief.com. And last but not least, my two books, Cleopatra, which is a children's book, and No Father, No Excuse, all of which are available on Amazon. Thank you very much. Okay, right back to our brother. Um, boom, there he is. 
Okay, and Kenji, here we go. All right, are you ready? Can you hear me, sir? Yes, sir, we here, we live. All right, yes, sir. Now, my next question for you is, what are some of the steps and advice that you give to other creatives about uh, pursuing pursuing our dreams? Praise be to Allah. First, first things first, you gonna get money, period. What are you gonna do with it? I've been telling people that since college, you're gonna be rich. So we waste a lot of time talking about, ooh, let's get to the bag, get to the bag. Bro, you can get a bag from anywhere. Anybody can just drop $200,000 on your desk. Are you gonna know that if you take $100,000 of that and put 20% down in the $500,000 property, you can make that property a cash out refinancing investment and take out $400,000 to then take out $100,000 and do that again with another $500,000 property and do that infinitely until you are a millionaire? No. So what do you need money for? What you need a bag for? You don't even got a plan. So first of all, remove the conversation of getting money, getting money, getting money, getting money, getting money from your art. It doesn't matter bro. what is your plan what are you gonna do and it makes me want to cry right now because it's a very emotional thing it hurts man i've been saying this for so long since before i even had any awareness of fully what my plan was i knew i needed one so stop it bro money don't fix nothing have we not learned money means perk 30s and semi-automatic machine gun. like what are we talking about money doesn't money doesn't <laughs> fix nothing if you don't have a plan because by default you use the money for the same plan that our beautiful light-skinned brethren, AKA white people have created for you. I mean, they wrote it out. It's perfect, bro. It's on Ozark. It's on Girlfriends. It's on Caillou, bro. It's everywhere. Mm-hmm. They done, it's, it's on Coco Melon or whatever that show's called. Um, it's everywhere. They tell us what their plan is. We got to have our own plan. I'm saying this day and we think I'm just by they, I mean the people that are in control. By we, I mean the people that aren't. We got to change that. We all should be in control of our destinies. Absolutely. And until that's the case, we need to stop wasting too much time talking about too much money. I say that to creators because I'm a rapper, bro. Is there a percentage of rappers that exist that doesn't talk about, oh, I get money on their songs? Absolutely not. There are none. There are zero, bro, including me. I'll be talking about getting money too. But my point is, we do it too much. Stop it. What are you going to do with the money if Allah comes to your door and says, hello, I'm Master Far Muhammad. I'm here not selling silks, but I'm going to give you $200,000. What are you going to do with it? Or do you know? Stop. That's my first thing. My second piece of advice that I generally give is work harder for, and this is the same thing as the first piece of advice. But secondly, please, brothers and sisters, in faith, even if you believe you atheist, which I don't believe you, so you got to explain that one, because you believe in something. Um, I mean, what, like, does infinity not exist? I don't understand. If you believe in infinity, you believe in God. Um, what's the largest number? That's what I thought. Okay, <clears throat> my point is we got to work harder for us than they work for them. Again, the us is people that aren't in control, the them, the people that are in control. And let's just put it this way. If you believe in God, the God and Satan thing, right? We got to work harder for God than devils do for Satan. They be going in, bro. I don't know if y'all watch TV. I don't know if y'all watch movies, but I don't know if y'all notice, you can't find a blockbuster film that don't have some straight foolishness in it that you can't let your children watch Mm -hmm. without having a problem in 20 years. Mm -hmm. You can't find one, bro. It's like by default for a blockbuster to be a blockbuster, it doggone there has to be rated R. So what are we talking about? They're going in. They don't ever stop. They don't ever let the gas down. They're not like, hmm, we have too many channels. Let's make less. No, they're not like, we have too many movies on Netflix. You know what we're going to do? We're not going to invest no money in CVS this year. No, they're not doing it. They're like, oh, you know what? We have enough people that are out here drinking uh, Slurpees and eating Big Macs. We're just gonna shut down McDonald's. We've served enough people. No, bro, like they going in. Even though they already got us under lock and key, they're going in. What are we doing? So yeah, we gotta work harder for ourselves. And that says to the registered members of the Nation of Islam. 
this is serious, yo. We got to go harder for Master Far Muhammad than Satan does for Satan. Go ahead and teach. Specifically, yo, specifically, what are we doing? Why is it that I'm going out with the Final Call newspaper and people don't know who he is? What is that? Why do I have have you heard of the Million Man March? And people are like, no. What is that? I'm 28 years old, fam. Like, we've been doing a lot and not doing a lot. Mm, so we gotta mm. get it right. I yeah. mean, if this is what it is, which it is, because this changed my life, then we need to be sharing it way more with our people and not be so scared about, oh, what if they find Joshua Muhammad's podcast and my interview and pull me from my music placements bro it's a wrap for that now for a kizzy i don't care because i already know we're going to be more successful on the other side we all got to get in that mentality of working harder for our thing than they work for their thing assalamu alaikum <laughs> brother and kizzy i have a question do you yes, want to go into the ministry sir man look they already done roped my leg and drug me across the yes sir <laughs> but it's not like a want more than it is a necessity think about it bro i'm a rapper it's a rap for that mm. not to use too much you know double entendre <laughs> no not to bar it up on y'all once yes. but <laughs> but the honorable minister louis farrakhan has i mean countlessly said one rap song is more powerful than a thousand of his lectures absolutely it's a rap, bro. If I don't want to be in the ministry, then I should have never said I have bars and started flaming people in the middle of FAMU's campus mm. and rapping them out of house and home. It's yeah. too late, bro. Mm. As a rapper, what am I doing? I'm delivering a message. Either my message is, ooh, get money, get money, get girls. Ooh, get drugs, get drugs, get girls. Ooh, or it's the teachings, right? Mm. But either way, my platform is countless billions of people. So I am in the ministry course and everybody out there that considers themselves a human being, if you got a pulse, okay, you in the ministry class, we got to stop playing this game. We're all ministers. You are the minister of Satan or you're a minister of God. Or again, if you don't believe in God, you're either a minister of nothing or you're a minister of what you believe in. Mm -hmm. so stop playing. And that's the end on this point. And this, these, you're asking me all these questions that I get asked all the time. So all praise is due to Allah. Cause I'm very passionate about every single question you're ask, asking me, like all of them can set me off. But um, it, it comes back to the concept of when I'm talking to another rapper, generally, if they're around my age and you talk about, ooh, you have an image and you gotta be responsible for that. They talk about, ooh, I'm not a role model. Bro, we gotta stop. Like, what are you doing? I'm sorry. If you are rapping, you are playing a role in front of other people. Mm. That's a model. What are you talking about? You can't pretend that your job doesn't rely on millions of people giving you money for whatever you're doing. That's a role model. You mm. are what you are. And we just gotta eat that and deal. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs> Like us alive, say, okay, so here's my question. So in the South, in Atlanta, I always hear if you get a everybody calls TI, if you get a Benz, I listen in. Uh Jay-Z, you know, uh, uh truthfully, I want to rap like common sense, but I did five mil. I ain't been rapping like common sense. This this concept that sometimes our people now here's a true story. Here's a true story. You say keep it real true story. Snoop, Rock Kim, both come to save us today. I'm on post with the minister. I'm walking through, boo boo. We get out the cars. We coming towards the stage. Uh, after the minister speaks, we like walking backstage and coming out a little thing. And it's all these MGT. Like I'm talking about all the MGT hair covered, all of this. Rakim come through, literally no security, no nothing. It was like, it was like, oh, it's a couple of brothers was like, oh, peace of the guys. Like, oh, Rakim, woo woo. When the MGT saw Snoop, it was over. So how do you, so I'm, I'm like, damn, I'm like, Rakim did, Rakim don't cuss, he don't do this, you know, and y'all was like, oh, what's up, S saw Snoop, it was over, it was, it, it was, it, it, my, I was like, so how do you as an artist combat that, like, you know what I'm saying, if, if, if some of our people want to show you more love, the more you talk about money, the more, I mean, that's just reality, so how do you handle that? Now, Josh, 
first of all, let me call on Master Far Muhammad himself. <laughs> Please guide me and assist me in whatever I'm about to say. Okay. I don't want to get in trouble. <laughs> Lord. Look, y'all, before this meeting, <laughs> Brother Josh is like, I asked everybody, is there anything I can't ask you? And I was like, oh, no, it's lit. Turn up. Like, ask me anything. Now I am in a hot seat. Okay. Well, <laughs> oh, God, Lord, please help me. All right. Yes. Okay. Look, brother, in my humble opinion, because I am just your brother in the most lowliest form. Okay. I don't know much. I've been in the ranks like two years. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I, I I read the books and everything a couple times. I still have not memorized my lessons. Okay, like um, I be forgetting which rock I'm on every day. Okay. Like okay. consistent. Okay. My answer is how hard are we going as purveyors? of the teachings of Master Farah Muhammad for the message of the teachings? That's the question, because honestly, I love my brother and I wish I, and I saw Brother Rakim was at Savior's Day, but I wasn't special, man. I was in like the, you know, the back of the back. So I didn't get to be in the, and see him. But if I did, I would hug him and embrace him and thank him for everything he's done for our culture. Mm. The same with Snoop Dogg. You know, I be in LA all the time, but I don't smoke weed, so I don't be seeing him. But <laughs> I love my brothers. But when it comes to Rakim, what I would humbly ask is, how clear is it that you're only a representative of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad under the guidance of the Honorable Mr. Louis Farrakhan? Mm -hmm. Bro, Minister Farrakhan pulled a million black men. What are we talking about? If you want MGT to be fawning over you, you need to be following somebody that pulled a million black men. Mm, mm. Go ahead, teach that. Go ahead, teach that. Go ahead, teach that. Not that he's not. I said, I'm not saying that. I'm saying like the amount of lyrical content that you have. Is it clear that this is what we representing? Or is it kind of representing a little bit of other stuff, trying to be cool, want to dip my money, how I need to get my money. And like, still, I'm like, I'm in the street, but I'm in the mosque, but I'm in the street, 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 but I'm, I'm in the mosque, but I'm in the street. And I got a bean pie and I sold a final call in 1989, but I'm in the street. And this is not about Rock at this point. This is about me. This is about all my rapper friends. I told, I told the brothers in the ranks when I joined in 2020 that I'm a rapper, so I can't take Final Call newspapers. Mm. I said this with a straight face to Brother Lebo Muhammad, Brother Student First Officer James in Los, this is Los Angeles. I didn't know who I was talking to. I, I mean, I might have messed around and accidentally said to Brother Student Regional Captain Halim, bro. I didn't even realize what I was saying and they treated me so gracefully, but I'm saying, I didn't even know that it was my responsibility to carry papers. Mm -hmm. But after a certain point, all of us in the ranks have to realize what it is we're representing has to be represented or else by default, the people are gonna think what we thought, which is the FOI are just cool people with bow ties and I don't know, they'd be doing security. I don't know. How clear are we making it? I'm pretty sure the MGT will fawn over what they're trained to fawn over. And they're trained to fawn over nice homes, a lot of money, friendships and all walks of life. And uh, Snoop Dogg has all of those things beyond imagination. So come mm. on, what are we talking about? Mm, mm. He's a better FOI than most FOI, including mm, myself. Mm, including mm. myself, bro. Okay. I'm going to stop answering this question because I'm going to get in trouble. <laughs> Golly. Hold on. Okay. Listen. I have my people hit your PR people and tell you before we go live, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, look, you know what I'm saying? We will you know, we want to make sure we understand. Yes, okay. sir. Praise be to Allah. Praise be to Allah. All right. My next question for you is, out of all of the projects that you've worked on, what has been one of your greatest lessons that, like, your greatest joys, like, your favorite projects that you worked on? Yes, sir. I think my greatest joys were 
the projects that I worked on for family. Mm. There, there isn't much that I've done <clears throat> for family that that the public has seen, mm. but but um, most of it, most of it, no one's seen. The, the songs I work on with my wife, they're they're way up there. We have a couple songs released. Um, because through the process of us working together, we realized we might like each other a little bit. And then we realized, wait, we might need to work with each other forever. And so mm. we have a song that was on our first project called Young Love, which, you know, I would have done it better if I knew what I knew now, but it's a good song. And, I, and that's, that's a, that means a lot to me and the other songs that her and I have done. And that's on the same level as the other family songs, which are the songs that I've done um, like with my sister, I have a sister that is a year older than me. Okay. Sometimes I listen back to the stuff that we did back when I was figuring it out. Nobody would probably ever hear some of this stuff, mm. but that means a lot to me because it's pure. I did a song for my mother and it's only like 20 seconds long <laughs> because it's such a scary thing to try to fully describe your love for your mother. I know you understand, brother. Yes, sir, yes, sir. I don't even need to talk about that any longer, but um, and then lastly, I did a song. This one's a tough one to get through without crying. But let me say this quick. I did a song with, um, I, did, I did a bunch of songs with a young lady named Lexi Alige. And she was one of my mentees, amazing artist out of Minnesota. And she passed away um, on the 1st of 2021 um, at a party taking what she thought was a perk and it was fentanyl and it was too much. Right, but this is one of the most talented people I've ever worked with on this planet. She fly out to LA, we sit in the studio, and she would just crank out songs nonstop. I'm working to keep up with her. I'm making the beat as fast as I can, and she's just spitting bars. And I'm just like, yo, this is some Jay Z stuff. Yeah, okay. And while they wanted to work with her, every bro, it it was so bad. All of her idols, all the people she looked up to started to reach out to her before she died saying oh yeah let's work oh let's make it happen and then she passed away and people were talking about dang i missed my shot i missed my shot dang i should have moved a little bit faster but my position on it was a little bit more raw because it wasn't about missing out on making the music with her we made a bunch of music a lot of it hasn't been released what i missed out on was giving her the teachings of master far muhammad bro and she was asking she was asking and I was trying to be cool <laughs> so I would give her pieces of uh, nuggets about investing and ownership. I read her contracts with her and tell her, look, you need to do this and do that. And don't listen to your lawyer about this because they're trying to take your publishing. They don't listen to this and change this. And, and all of it was coming from the teachings, man. All of it was coming from the teachings. That's the only one up I have in the music industry because I'm following Minister Farrakhan. That's what makes me so smart. But I wasn't telling her that. And she wanted to know. She looked, she looked on YouTube and see Farrakhan videos and stuff. And she was like, oh man, that's deep, that's dope. And, and Kenji, I really like what you'd be talking about when you'd be talking about Muslim stuff and whatever, but I, I wasn't deep enough. Mm. And that parallel with when I started to, you know, really take Mariah, my wife seriously and go through the engagement process. Cause when she died and then when I realized, dang, I'm about to get married, well, dang, my lack of being solid in the teachings caused my sister to do something that she might not have done if I would have told her about the teachings. Mm. And then moving forward, what am I going to do to my wife? <laughs> what, what, what lack of information, what is that, where is that going to take her if she doesn't know what I know? So let me get deeper into the ranks. Let me join that for a while, at least find out what, is, what it's about. Find out where this Malcolm X dude came from. So yeah, those are the songs that are the closest to me that mean the most to me. The songs that were done with family, you know? And uh, again, a lot of it, no one no one can really see. You might not even see it online, but I have a couple of songs with, that have Lexi Alige um, and, and a song or two that I produced for her that are out there. So um, 
Yeah, all praise is due to Allah. I hope that answered your question. Absolutely, it did. All praise is due to Allah. My sister Miriam says, it's okay, brother. Everything happens by Allah's active or permissive will. It's not your fault. I pray uh, you find uh, peace in your memories together. Um, Sophia Cameron says, all praise is due to Allah. Somebody named um, Taylor, Miss Taylor says she's a uh, hey and King and King uh, and King. I don't know. What's your name, bro? My and Kenji, it's all and good. <laughs> And everybody's saying that's beautiful and showing you love all across the country. Okay, boom. My next question is, okay, so so you've done all of this. You in LA. I'm in Atlanta holding it down. What how, what made what made you just message me, man? So so you say so we can read like like what's up? Like what what made you be doing all of this and be like, man, what's up with the people's podcast? Bro, first of all. Look, stop playing. I hope you record this as a snippet and play it back. You know how on the radio they do drops? It's like, absolutely, absolutely. DJ whatever, the coolest DJ in the world. Check this absolutely. out. This is my Netflix, man. Oh, what you. am I doing if I'm not watching Joshua Muhammad? I've watched every single, bro. I've clicked through every single video on your YouTube page, man. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. ran mm -hmm. out and I'd be upset. I'm like, when is he going to upload more? Every single one. And I started, like, when I started, I started, like, in the middle or wherever. Somebody, it was Brother Nuri or somebody that I thought was interesting and popping. Like, the Snoop Dogg effect, right? <laughs> Ooh, they're cool. And then I go and watch that one. And then I start to watch more of it. And I realize, dang, I like this. <laughs> I need to know more information. Because this is the background behind the teachings that you don't get. What we call in L.A., we call it on the job training they probably yes, sir, yes, that everywhere but this is the best on the job training that i could get in media <clears throat> netflix don't give this to me hulu doesn't give this to me Thank why click so through every bro you are the next whatever but not even no forget that you are joshua muhammad you're joshua that's the bite that's that's the bar you are joshua muhammad and you know what no this is what it was it was some joshua farrakhan joints that's what it was. This is the Joshua on Joshua. That's that's bro. If you ever want to make a million dollars directly from the pockets of the nation of Islam, put out a Joshua on Joshua series, bro. Y'all yes, have it set off. Put it on NFA. They get their subscribers to a million finally, like it should have been <laughs> already, like five years ago. Whatever. Um, but my Sick. point is <clears throat> that's what it was. It was seeing your consistency. And like a brother told me, a Negro can't be consistent. Mm. You're a really excellent example of FOI through this ministry <clears throat> and through studying each and every single one, how you interact with your parents, going all the way back to before you had, you had like four or five little records on the wall. And now you got the whole wall. You probably got the whole room on the other side. Come, Bro, <clears throat> that's why I'm here. And that's why I reached out to you. <clears throat> but there was a specific thing I wanted to reach out to you for. Because I've been a fan for a minute and I didn't reach out when I became a fan, I, I waited a long time because I don't believe in wasting people's time. <clears throat> and people, please treat me with that respect. Please, y'all see what it is. I'm your brother. I don't, I'm not big. I'm not nothing. Again, I don't care about these little placements I've gotten or whatever, but I've gotten some, okay? Yes, sir, yes, sir. And like by the standards of the music industry, they're not little. So if you're not ready to perform at a level that doesn't require me to purely be dragging you, please do not hit me up about that job. I'm not interested in that job. I want to see people that are already running and practicing their Islam hitting me up trying to practice harder. Now, if you hit me up with that, I'm going to redirect you. I'm not going to shut you down, but I'm going to redirect you to another friend, another family, another um advisor or a set of instructions that you can grow and learn and get to the point where we can do business mm -hmm. but i hit you up joshua when i was ready to do business yes, that, sir. Yes, that, sir. that took a minute that wasn't immediately i was a fan a fan a fan and then i heard you say something on one of the interviews yes, about sir. a potential piece of art that you wanted to create and yes, that's sir. all i'll say but i heard hey i'm working on that too now let me see if i can get this brother Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. There was a reason that we had business to handle. It's like if you have Minister Farcon's phone number, are you just going to call him because you're tired and you're lonely tonight? And I want to hit up my old friend, Minister Farcon. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. it don't make no sense. So I hit you when there was a like life or death situation from my perspective of if I don't let this man know I'm ready to work on this, I'm shooting us both in the foot. 
and we yes, can't run, we can't run the race. That's right. So that that's why I hit you up, brother. Oh, crazy to a lot. Yes, sir. And people showing you love. Uh, my name, my sister's name said a true supporter. Chris Taylor said, "Operates into a lie." Um, and Juduka Killmonger says, "And King and Kenji, um, I love hearing you talk like this. It has been a pleasure seeing you grow and move through your life the way you have." Yeah. Um, Thank so you, cousin. Facts, operates into a lie. Uh, boom! Everybody showing you love. Can't wait to put this on YouTube. All right, my next question is: Speaking of people who want to reach out to you, I know you know me doing theater and directing plays and casting my own. Man, where do they got to hit you? They want you, to, you want to hit them in your DMs? How you want people to reach out to you and say, look, I can sing, I can dance, I can rap, what you want them to do? Go to everythingonetime.com, everything1x.com. That's our company that we're building. If you go to everything one time, everything1x.com, you will see the Instagram, you will see the email, and you can reach out to us in either of those platforms. The email is best. It's business at everything1x.com business at everything1x.com that's it we're growing <clears throat> and we're building so right now you're not going to see a whole bunch of flashiness you're not going to see all the credits listed out and all the it ain't all that <clears throat> we're just accruing the people that are interested in working with us and organizing the projects so when we start rolling we can roll hard and not have to stop <clears throat> i've had to do this a few times where i ramp up and then pull it back down, ramp up and pull it back down. <laughs> this time we we collecting, we're getting it right with our prayer. We spend a lot of time on them prayer rugs. Yes, sir. Yes, you know sir. I'm saying? We building our interpersonal relationships so that when you pop up and then somebody cheats on somebody's wife, everything doesn't crumble. Or you pop up and then somebody stole some money and disappeared, everything doesn't crumble. I'm setting it up to be fireproof, bulletproof. But to the extent that I can, and then a lot of God will do the rest. <clears throat> yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, so right now you ain't gonna see a lot, but hit us up, and we will get back to you on that email or on the Instagram. Please, thank you. Oh, praise the Lord! Your wife is in the comments, uh, putting it, uh, dropping the links on Facebook, and you know, once we on YouTube, that's where uh, a large uh, percentage of viewers are watching. I want to thank you again, sir. Let you know, man, this means so much to me. You reaching out. You see, I told you, I hit my sisters, like, bro, I don't think this is real. Like, bro, why don't you Google this dude? Like, because I, I was like, you did what? And you and you working on this project? And then they, my sisters are part of, as you see, they are in the comments, they are part of all yes, my, sir. Pro, my books, movies. They they, they going to be like, I'm right here. Oh, who's casting for this? What you doing? So when I told them about your you, research they, team. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> so, you know what I'm saying? so I want to thank you. Thank your wife. Um, you sent me the video of her singing. I was like, oh, man, she's singing. You rapping. You know what I'm saying? Everything is a talent. Now you gotta make you gonna make me put more effort in when I'm on top five of my my singing. I gotta show where hey hey I got some range right here and uh, I just wanna yes, thank sir. you. You don't yes, know, sir. I, I'm telling you you don't know how much especially I'm, I'm, I'm of course I'm gonna chop this up put it on Facebook and Instagram but how much you've inspired not only me but the people who are gonna see this because I talk to creators behind the scenes and we looking for somebody who says I bear witness there's no guy but a lie who's doing Disney stuff doing huh. You know how much I would love to be the main dude in a Hallmark movie and you doing music on it? Like, what is it? Lifetime movies and stuff? I'm like, what is going on? I would love to be in the Christmas, one of the Christmas and Papa's, hey, girl, I love you, man. You in small town, love you. already know how it go, and then you're going to break up and make up, get back together. Bam. And you already doing that? That's, that's, that's inspirational, bro. Mars Bond to a lot. And um, your wife's been there supporting you. One last question. How, how important has your wife been to you in, your, uh, in this journey? Man, that's everything, <clears throat> everything. Because here's the thing. If you are one with your wife, then you're a human being. <laughs> it's like there's levels of being a human. <clears throat> you can't complete your humanity until you have that other half. Mm. So it's that study of how to temper myself, how to be humble, how to serve when and if I'm in any situation. Because no matter what, my responsibility right there. It's in that study that I'm recognizing how to master myself. Because every single thing that I thought I fixed inside of me, my life has revealed there are levels to <laughs> there are levels to improvement. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And then every single thing that I thought I was perfect in inside of me, my wife has revealed that as an absolute joke. And there. <laughs> No such thing. I mean, bruh, man, you should have seen us a couple of days ago, man. Look, there's certain conversations that you get into with a wife. 
I've only been married for two years. I got married basically when I joined the Nation of Islam. Mm-hmm. But there's certain conversations that you get into that force you to cope with either being Allah or being Satan. Mm-hmm. Being, being Allah or being Satan. <clears throat> and so I say being with her is everything. And that's been everything to my development because it's showing me how to be Allah fully not just when it's easy, but yeah. during those moments when you either are Allah or Satan. Yes, sir, yes, sir. If you Satan, you'd be like, oh, oh, if I went over there, then I'd be Allah. See what yeah. I'm saying? And you don't ever get the moments unless it's with somebody that's so intimate with you that there are no limits. Yes, sir, yes, sir. They can't, nobody else can get to them parts and play around with them and push those buttons and yank those levers, you know? <clears throat> but my wife uh, can, and she does her job. Uh, flawlessly you know <laughs> she, she she cooks she, she loves all me she helps me with every element of the business and she takes lead when she needs to take lead in certain areas and she does her own thing and um one of those things is forcing me into perfection forcing absolutely driving me very 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 strongly towards it okay. so um that's the role that she's played yes sir oh praise the Lord. well i look forward to it uh me, you're supposed to be, uh, I'm going to make some time. I, I work the same time we're going to be in the city, but we're going to make some time so I can, we can see each other face to face. Absolutely. Uh, may Allah continue to bless you. This is oh, let, let me pause you, brother, because I appreciate that. And may Allah continue to bless you as well. But look, brother, there is one more last, last question. I watch every single one of these episodes, man. <laughs> I ain't wanna, I ain't wanna, are you sure you want me to ask? Because I was like, you so young, I ain't want to ask Bruh, you. Bruh, no, ask me the question, man. <laughs> All right, well, brother Akinji, uh, what, what would you like your legacy to be? Thank you, sir. All praises to Allah. I would love my legacy to be Allah, to be God, right? Mm-hmm. I want that to be my legacy. An example, like Jesus, of somebody that's really trying to be perfect. Mm-hmm. Not just somebody that's like, oh, I do my best. And, you know, Lord ain't done working with me yet and all that stuff. I'm talking about I actually say, no, no, I'm going to do this all the way. Period. I'm going to be God. I'm going to grow into God. I want to be one with God period I want that to be a legacy at least I died trying you know I leaned forward into it and whatever level in which I wasn't successful was a function of my own inability but that was the goal and the aim oh praise it's so uh, beautiful my sister Mimi said he said don't cheat me ask the question and then um Miss Taylor said she is truly weak she was laughing at your, uh, your joke I want to thank everybody for watching uh, this means so much. This is this is only part one. We can put this in the thing. This is only part one because we're gonna be back. We got work to do. Uh, this is Joshua Leonard Muhammad signing off for the People's Podcast. Thank you again, bro. Assalamualaikum, sir. Thank you, sir. Waalaikumsalam.